What's up guys? This is the Roseman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Pirates. And so to pick up where we left off, we now dominate the British Isles and we are making advances in North America. So we're quite we're fairly close to the end of this campaign, actually, because we only need to capture a few more territories. Uh, I'm gonna be looking to capture some territories in North America, but I think what I want to do is continue my attack in Europe and go for maybe Copenhagen and potentially well I suppose I could prob focus on Copenhagen and try and get Norway and Sweden something like that uh, before holding my uh, new faction well my new faction vote just a bit of a poll to figure out what you guys think I should do with the remainder of this campaign uh, but as it stands everything's pretty good so Upper Louisiana is taken, obviously Lower Louisiana decided to try and attack us, but we then swiftly knocked them out. And where did I... S oh, where did I... Oh, okay, there they are. I was, like, I was about to go, where did they get to? Um, okay. So we can push you guys up towards Michigan Territory. Actually, I might even bring you guys back to hit Chikasa, because at some point the Cherokee will be at war with us and I'd rather have territory ne right next to them. If we're going to push up north then Mr. Dampy is able to do it next turn. Uh, but apart from that we are just growing our armies here in London ready for the invasion of Copenhagen. So in terms of tech we're going to be getting Coke Blast, Furnace and Joint Stock Companies which are two pretty good techs. But apart from that let's just hit end turn and allow things to continue the way they have been. Because So we've reached a point now where you know, I've got the uh, the four units I can recruit on land, and I can maybe you know exercise a bit of a bit more research and expand my military capability to include quicklime. But beyond that, it's just going to be stacks and stacks of uh, artillery and howitzers. Just keep booting away the peace treaties. Keep doing our upgrades here. We don't have to worry about the Cherokee because we're currently at peace with them. So drop some upgrades. Push you guys on up towards Detroit. Although there is almost no garrison, so you're going to have to. No, oh. we're not going to attack them just yet. I'm content just to let them siege because it'll take only take two turns, and there's more interesting stuff going on elsewhere. So let's repair the Weaver's Cottage. Let's fix the Pleasure Gardens. Let's upgrade Newcastle to a trade port. And we probably also want to recruit another ship to occupy the port. Let's upgrade Liverpool. Actually, you need to start rolling out road upgrades. Because most of my areas don't have upgraded roads. At least, well, obviously Europe does because we've been upgrading them. But elsewhere, actually, uh, we're pretty bare. We've still got some ports that haven't been upgraded. So, how are we looking? Lord? Jacques Blauvelt. Yes, my lord. His force is done. Uh, Cornelius Bellamy's force is nearly done. Benito yeah. Baker's force is is also nearly done. You ask too much. You're humble, Roche Cunningham is carrying on the recruitment of a uh, replenishment force, or something to, to back up my initial invasion. And I could probably stand to recruit some more ships next turn. Or I could just bring fleet of Tobias Ward into Port Greenwich because this is a fairly lucrative trade zone to raid but the trouble is we're not actually at war with Quebec so we don't get as much as we possibly could. 13,000 a turn and it's not bad. I think the Amps the Dutch are forever forever watching. Uh, we need to make sure we can get a good clear run to land at Copenhagen. So the Dutch have an army and a half there. That's the main reason why I've... Okay, so I think the Spanish are dispatching troops to try and attack the Cherokee that are currently raiding their territory. Hopefully, they send enough troops to attack them that the Cherokee... I was about to say so, so that the Cherokee attack the Spanish, but obviously we don't want that because we're at peace with the Cherokee and I can't actually fight them because I can't declare war on them in any way. 
New town emerges. Charlotte and the Carolinas. Here you go. Get a craft workshop going. Get a couple of good, some good road upgrades. Okay, and dumped a bunch of cash on them. Roche Cunningham, you can get one of each. You've got a, one extra turn of replenishment before you're at full strength. You'll also be ready in one turn. Can't actually recruit any extra ships because we just, we, we're just short of cash. Okay, two more turns to have to worry about new technologies. Let's hit it end turn. Yeah, the United Province is going to go sweep up some roaming fleets. We haven't got to worry about them. Hello. Oh, Spain, you silly billies. You've attacked a pirate force on the open ground. So we're going to surround and engulf them before pushing on towards their territory. And then at that point, that army will stay uh, off the on the Cherokee border, just waiting for them to declare war on me as Mr. Dampy to the north pushes up through Cherokee territory. So my guns... They can all take positions up here on the hill. I got my front militia line, a couple of militia on the flank, backed up by some buccaneers. And I got three militia on the left, backed up by two buccaneers. So all of you together. Buccaneer unit to follow at the front. General behind them. The enemy is bringing in reinforcements, but I really do not care. The more reinforcements they bring to bear, the smaller force they'll have to attack us when we advance. So this militia is going to have to run. So I want to get them past the guns as quickly as possible. Yeah, this militia line can run as well. I mean, mostly it's four clo well, three colonial line units plus a mounted tribal auxiliary. My gun unit, gun teams focus on the tribal auxiliary. My howitzers can attack the enemy in the dead ground. We should start to see some musket shots being popped off. So already, my militia fire is enough to cause significant morale problems. Native bowmen have routed. Hello. So let's get my militia to run, because that's a native bowman auxiliary. It would appear their left flank has broken. Come on men, make ready and fire. I mean, the native bowmen should be quite upset from the militia opening fire because they're very close and on that range even though militia aren't particularly very good infantry they're accurate enough. See, there's the Spanish column coming in for reinforcements. Let's get my artillery to focus on them. How it says focus on the tribal auxiliary. There goes some shots against the tribal auxiliary. Oh, I missed out a militia unit. Push the buccaneers up because it looks like they're going to get f they're going to face off against a native bow auxiliary unit. Yeah, they're sturdy, and the bow units can put out a surprising amount of firepower. At that point, uh, we've lost them with the eleventh, but they will likely come back. I think I need to direct my artillery fire to something a bit more typical. New men run, new men run, new men run. There you go, that's a that's a infantry unit routing. So 
another native bow auxiliary unit. Come on, 11th Regiment, come back. Send a buccaneer unit in to deal with the infantry. There we go, they came back. So push my line up on top of the hill at high speed. There we go, that's kind of perfect. So my, militia, my buccaneers will engage them and they'll get shot in the brea as they engage. Retarget the artillery to focus on the infantry in the battle line. Get my howitzers to start to try and pick off some of the later units. You guys hidden? You are. Let's try and jump on the general's bodyguard with you. Get both my foot artillery units to engage the 4th regiment. Get my howitzers engaging the 20th. Get my buccaneers in on the flank. And the 9th light foot. Get you guys to attack the general's bodyguard as well to try and finish that engagement fairly quickly. So we can try and get more militia support against the these infantry units here, the colonial militia and so on. You guys currently aren't shooting anyone, but right now that's... There we go, push up the line. You men engage the General's bodyguard. You men engage the 23rd. You men push the flank of that unit. Foot artillery keep engaging the centre. How it says engage the tribal auxiliary. Actually, looks like the general's bodyguard managed to route two buccaneer units. So let's bring up another buc unit, buc buccaneer unit in reserve. If one of these units come back, which the ninth looks like they're in great shape to come back, they can pursue the general's bodyguard themselves. Look how wanted them. Okay, you guys can now both try and hit the Tribal Auxiliary. Getting my most of my militia line to advance up onto the hill here. There we go, so the artillery are routed. Native Bowman Auxiliary are coming back, but the Tribal Auxiliary now are bogged down fighting against my Buccaneers. Make sure they're ungrouped. To be honest, where's my general? We are number their general significantly. Yeah, 23rd are being engaged, so understandably they're upset. Wood artillery engage the militia. Howitzers engage the colonial line. There we go. So get my buccaneers to advance and chase down the native bowmen, get my militia up here. Could be dropping carcass shots on people, but there we go. Now all my artillery hammer the mounted tribal auxiliary. To be honest, well, the twentieth got pummeled by artillery. You men run towards them at least. There we go. Some of them always stop. See enough, they stop chasing my buccaneers. My buccaneers actually return to combat. Foot artillery engage the 22nd. My general's bodyguard, my pirate lord, has engaged the Spanish commander. Their general may look to success successfully... No, I was about to say evade combat, but they have not. So get my artillery to engage the militia. Get my militia forces to push up. The 
And there we go. So my buccaneers are continuing to mob the native auxiliary. Down they go. You guys don't need to run quite so wide. Get these buccaneers up here. Oh, actually, that worked in my favour. Usually firing into combat is not a great idea, if you can avoid it. Because <laughs> what I find is that uh, my guys suffer... Usually suffer more than the bad guys do. Push up that militia there. Newman advanced to form a new line in case they decide they want to come back. And the buccaneers form up behind said line. Artillery ceasefire. The 20th are now surrounded. Or if not, now they will be. My howitzers can fire because they can lob shells over. Nope, the 20th have fallen back as well. That's what you get, Spain. That's what you get. You should never have engaged us. You should have holed up in your fort. Excellent, so they lost 2,000 men. They have 900 men remaining. They're consolidating their strength near the city, which isn't a bad move. That's all they can really do. They could try and break out west if they wanted to cause some problems, but that would just be delay delaying the inevitable. I mean, I'm just... I can't believe that. Okay, so... I'm going to auto it, because it, look at it. But look at the balance of power. 50-50, apparently. I've got 4,500 men, they have 900. Undaunted, undefeated. Damn right. So let's pop up to okay so mr montalban replenish your troops put chikasa under siege if the rest of them want to try and attack us they are more than welcome we are not super bothered that's detroit taken you men replenish upgrade the farms because these territories are great as far as towns go mr dampy advance up to the border because they should be fairly happy with us because we are a pirate republic upgrade some roads then hop back to Europe so that army is done oh no we need, we need a buccaneer to hop out recruit a general Henry Lafitte Troops, who can begin the, who can begin to uh, recruit some uh, supporting troops. So now we have a whole bunch of ships. So Jacques Blauvelt, embark your force. So this isn't going to go swimmingly. Yeah, I know the Dutch are there. There's probably more ships in, in the open ocean. But no one's going to stop us. We have enough we have enough range. Mostly enough range. We can land in the land in oh that's a We can land here and then run across the gap. Okay. So send in the next ship. Send in a galleon. The agent can embark. Actually the agent can just sail into here. Paris is exp is open. <sighs> Fascinating. Ready and awaiting or make ready. Let's get a fifth actually, let's get a flight Underway. into here. Let's get Cornelius Bellamy over to support the attack in Copenhagen. Awaiting further orders. Deploy the troops. Get them over here. We are going to get attacked or counter-attacked by the enemy, but I at least want three armies attacking Copenhagen. Because being pirates, I need to just outnumber the enemy at all costs. Especially as we're going to be having a significant problem 
of C control. You may also attack Copenhagen. There we go. So you got about 12,000, maybe more pirates. Ah, about 12,000. Sieging the city. So they might come and attack us, but we've got a good number of pirates there. But that is very good to know. So let's, to be honest, my if I, don't, if I send actual ships, they will just get pushed out of the city, pushed out of the ports, and then attacked. But it's nice, to, it's good to know that. Because it means that Mr. Cunningham, Mr. Lafitte, and the armies that they're going to build are going to go and try and attack Paris. Because that is interesting. But I want to, them to attack me once in Copenhagen. Just so I can try and damage their forces a certain degree. New port emerges in Belfast. I missed that. Okay, you can go around and protect Newcastle. There's not very much trade going through the channel at the moment. Hmm. One more turn till we get blast furnaces. Let's hit end turn. Yep, so they're going to boot us out of their ports. And then they're going to immediately attack them and destroy said ships. Dutch fleets come out of the Baltic. Sadly, it's going to involve... Well, no, if we just... Ooh, some second rates. Just retreat. Trouble is, though, we are... We are hated by everyone. We cannot run forever. Oh my god, they lost... They lost four ships. Well, you say disaster. That's quite a good trade-off, actually. Okay, so they've realised we're interested in the in the in Paris. Thirteen colonies are still after peace, which they're not going to get. Wurttemberg's probably going to ask for peace. Oh no, they didn't. How odd. Yeah, so we've let them know. Swiss grenadiers, hussars. Not building fortifications, which is good. They managed to. We got away with a turn of sieging, which is good because it means it's depleting these units and their armies are good. 16,000 in income, so let's dump a few upgrades here in Europe. Build a sloop. And then Henry. Start max recruiting your replacement force. New town emerges. Grand Canada and Guatemala. So you can get a craft workshop. We can upgrade this mine. Well, I have no cash, but we need to keep. Oh, there's a new port in Tampico as well. God damn. Tech advance. Coke blast furnace. Good stuff. We're probably going to keep going down this route. Down this industrial route, because it's just providing us significant amounts of income. I think we'd be silly not to push it. We're going to carry on sieging Chikasa because it looks like they're going to try and get at, get us next turn anyway. So I'm hoping at the very least this force will drive west and get involved. One more turn to joint stock companies is done. You're just sat on the border because ultimately yeah, three more territories. So it's going to take a hmm, not long, not long to complete this uh, <laughs> these objectives. go a sloop let's see how many of my sloop can the kill none they captured it but looks like they might not have taken the sloop into service and they're gonna do some fleet exchanges and they're moving back to the front line okay so i don't think the armies to the right are getting involved in this fight at chikasa so let's get involved and this will destroy their garrison forces. Well, they'll destroy their garrison forces and the city will be ours. I doubt they're going to be 
I doubt we're going to be uh, seeing a Spanish offer of peace. I mean, we could defend, but I'm not going to. We're going to get involved. I want to try and get more buccaneers on the flanks. So my foot artillery sit at the back. Howitzers be further up to the front. Get them to fire carcass shot. Because I didn't do that last time. And now my forces are a bit more depleted. We may as well. Get my militia forces to run. Because they've got mortars. We need to close the distance. Carcass shot will go go a certain distance in helping us because it's going to attack the crews. Yeah, so they're getting their own fancy shots off against us. So my howitzers actually attack the line infantry. Get my foot artillery to keep attacking the mortars. Reinforcements coming in are a couple of native units plus general's bodyguard. Who can see the slaughter that's that's going to unfold on the horizon? You are not going to be as useful. So you men push around the flank like so. My buccaneers advance up the flank. My left can push up. Yeah, I've killed a few men there. Killed a few men there. The militia. There we go. The militia have routed. Oh no, okay. So they're coming back. Chances are the other units will come back. Yeah, the 9th are returning. They're going to continue. They're going to continue to be harassed by my howitzers rather than my line. Continue the advance. Keep picking off these small units while we can. Yeah, Hessian line infantry. Hessian line. Get my foot artillery to keep attacking the 3rd regiment. Everyone's going to be opening up on the 9th. Including the 27th on the flank. We still don't have advanced firing drills yet. Excellent angle for carcass shot, but zero kills. There you go, the 8th. They're under fire from many directions too. The 10th are upset. Hello. They're shooting back. Their artillery outrange is my own. Keep the advances going. I saw them go invisible, so let's get my buccaneers up there rapidly. Get forward to attack the native bowmen, because it seems like buccaneers have a better time engaging bowmen than my militia do having a gunfight with them. There they are. And there's the northern group. Get my buccaneers just to charge straight in. Eh, two militia units break off and engage that militia unit on the right flank. Then whatever militia units are available, they will charge. We'll see what whatever are available. It's going to be the ones that are going to be in the best position to charge into the native auxiliary from the flank. Extra kills. Huh. Didn't really expect to be quite so many 
native troops here. Let's actually make sure to run my general up here rapidly. Human focus against the 3rd Regiment. You guys push forward towards the enemy line here. You men ignore the General's bodyguard and try to get a charge into the rear of the native Bowman Auxiliary. My General is charging up. Get my Militia up here as well. These units collectively should be enough to take out the 3rd Regiment because we've got so much more firepower. 26th to support the attack on the 20th. This regiment of militia bayonet charge the native Bowman Auxiliary. We've got them surrounded. So the hope is we can start to cause some moral issues. The general's bodyguard is a bit of a issue, so let's take a buccaneer unit and split them away to attack it specifically. 20th Regiment are going down handsomely. Nice mix of Buccaneers and Militia here. Let's see how you get on. Or are you going to get shuffled back into the mix? Oh, he died. Okay. Okay, then this unit... Push on and attack the General, because this unit's going to die pretty rapidly too. That means all of you go after the General. General's bodyguard... Whip around the flank and go after the horse artillery. I need to keep them nearby so that they could provide a morale bonus for my troops, just in case they decided they wanted to break. Actually pivot a couple of units off to fight against the 20th. There goes the enemy general. So I suspect his staff will not be around for very long although they are still doing okay the third regiment is still surviving they're actually out of range of all of my artillery those horse artillery crews they're nailing it away from my general There we go. Now my general's in the mix. They should be done for. The 3rd Regiment have routed. 20th have routed. And it's just this gun crew left, although they've lost one gun crew. The rest are routing. And what they're going to see is... Uh... There we go. The end of the action. So that is a Spanish territory taken on the frontier. They've retreated, and that's a frustrating direction for them to push towards, because that means that we won't actually be able to stop them quite so easily, and they might be able to... Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Chokey have declared war on us. Württemberg wants peace. That's fair enough. Let them declare war on us. There we go. So we've taken Chikasa. We can send a detachment. Well, I guess if we could send a detachment, we might actually want to bring James Dampy south to help prevent a breakout from the Spanish and also the Cherokee from causing too much damage. Let's drop some more upgrades. Cassetta, get a craft workshop. My rake can push up towards Philadelphia. Frederico, push up the west. Let's upgrade this port here. Let's upgrade Pensacola. Add a sloop. And we've also got... Here we go, Tampico has been upgraded. So let's get a sloop to occupy that port as well. Good. 
19,000 income this turn. Now we're starting to get to the point where when we start when we begin cranking out turns, it's really in our favour. So you're still pirating the northern route, although that not, doesn't provide us as much income as it possibly could. There we go. So you're recruiting. Well, I mean, it's militia that you got. So you're still on the the uh, one buccaneer, two militia diet. A couple of other Dutch rakes here in Paris, and they're still letting us siege Copenhagen, which is which is great because it means that we we just get more attrition on the in, on the garrison. I'm not overly concerned about blitzkrieging my way through I am more than happy to attrit them and make it easier for us down the line so you've just got joint stock company so instead let's get you on to get yeah, lime juice and sauerkraut because of the minus 5% upkeep good is everyone still recruiting everyone's pretty good let's move the sloop over to Belfast. There we go. So in terms of income, yeah, England's right at top. Four, four, nearly fifteen thousand. Twenty nine point four percent tax. I don't think there's a way to really increase that. Oh no, yes, there is. So in America, yeah, yeah, yeah no, Europe. You're not going to get off easier than the Americas. So now they should be, there you go, this should be the same or similar tax level. Some slight differences. Okay, let's hit enter. Ooh, I had to think about that for a second. The United Provinces are continuing to move their ships around to try and cause us problems. Hopefully those fleets in the channel do move, because actually that could cause problems for us. See, I know exactly that's the kind of thing they would do. <laughs> that's exactly the kind of thing that this, those little little armies do when you let them have that sort of autonomy. They could have, well, they couldn't take the city, but they could have raided on their way. But maybe they didn't want to get caught out. Either way, Upper Louisiana is recruiting troops. And we do have you who can push here. So that blocks them from going south. New town emerges. Kumana, New Andalusia. Craft workshop. I mean, we could. We're getting to the point now where we're just generating so much income. I mean, you want to pick which ports to upgrade very selectively, but we're now getting a good amount of cash each turn that we can be a bit more scattergun with how we invest it. We haven't got to worry about maximising every last dollar. Pretty sure that's the breakdown I need. Five, six more. Yeah, there we go. So 18,000. Let's recruit another general. Jacob Ward. You will be able to. Be you will begin to do the same thing. Because actually, I think to be honest, when we fight this battle over Copenhagen, we will also start to see. We'll also see the attack on Paris. But because they're now bankrupt, bankruptcy is huge. Actually, this army in the field is now being attrited as well. It was previously in good shape, but now they're being attrited because Copenhagen, Denmark, is now receiving zero income. Not a bad, not a bad result. Just keep churning through the end turns and keep yes, on oh. growing this army. Sir. If I can get three stacks, then I can definitely just push and take Paris. I won't even need three, I just, in my head, I want three. <laughs> so if I take Copenhagen, take Paris, that'd be a good... That would draw this campaign to a good close, I think. Well, provisional close. Very much depends on uh, what you guys have to say. Because, yeah, I, I fear that it may become too... too simple and too repetitive. 
Potentially. Ultimately, if you guys vote to continue... Well, if you guys vote to have me continue to play this campaign, I'm more than happy to do it. Finally! So, as you can see, the, the troops inside have all been quite significantly attrited. And the reinforcing army has also been quite badly attrited. So let's do this. It's the garrison that's attacking us, and it means we're probably going to have reinforcements, enemy reinforcements, coming in directly behind us, which could actually just wipe us out. Because we're not going to have... When you've got proper line infantry and guards and cavalry and stuff, you can afford to have a smaller portion of your army facing the front, because they can each put out so much more firepower. Um, but this time, because I'm using pirates, you can't really do that, because my guys actually put out less firepower than theirs. So we can do a certain amount. I mean, the wall... Well, you know what? As pirates, walls walls aren't actually that terrible. Because my usual gripe with walls is that you can't use fire by rank. That's the reason why I don't really like putting men behind walls, because you just get less firepower out of them. It's better for them. Actually, okay, I might put... I might put you guys behind stakes, actually. Realistically. And then let's put two more militia. Out wide here. Because the enemy has a lot of cavalry. So you're in the line, you're in the line. You are not in the line, but will... Soon be in the line. The Ark of Fire isn't very good, but if they just sit there firing round shot, then that'll be more than enough. It looks like I've stolen some troops from somewhere. Yeah, I think it was the troops out on the flank over here. Then it's still both of them. Ultimately, when we've destroyed the garrison... Actually, I know what I want to do. Let's take three of my pirates. Let's form a flying V defensive line with stakes. Because <laughs> I'm not quite sure where they're going to be coming in from. Logic dictates it would be here. But you know how the AI is. General, with, I mean, look at this for a bugged out unit. The most powerful general staff ever devised. Jesus Christ. Uh, but he's still going to be the first to die. So I think someone's definitely got it on. It always seems to bug based on the unit that it's... That it, oh, I, I can't remember the intricities of it. But it's going to be because you can get 300 men in a militia unit. Whatever the bug was, it's because it was a militia unit that it read the data for or something like that. I mean, they're attacking me, so... All my guns are going to open up against their artillery. Hello, horse guards. This is why I've put guys behind stakes, because that means when you try and charge, you should be quite upset. Any artilleries. That's a lot of fire. Horse guards has re resisted from pushing. Where's my howitzers? So you can start to try and pick off. Well, one of you can try and pick off some of the men from a horse guard unit. You start blowing, trying to blow holes in that infantry unit. You men start to try and knock out some of these cavalry. The rest of my foot artillery can carry on engaging the enemy guns. Gee, you guys might have to go for them instead. You can carry on attacking the guards, because ultimately, guards' cavalry is very good. Okay, I might have to start... Oh no, if they're not advancing... 
I don't have to rejig my strategy. Although it would be great to begin attacking some of these units to the front. And this unit on the flank, go after the light horse. Carcass shot inbound. Excellent target here. Because, yeah, we managed to get some of the horse guards and also obliterate the 5th regiment. So let's begin to select new targets because the, the cavalry's coming in. The section of my line that doesn't have stakes. Let's get my cavalry to blast the second with canister shot. Not my cavalry. My artillery to blast them with canister shot. It's not going to be... Okay, it is enough to make them rout. Engage the blunderbuss shotgunners because they're close. Which they, they just reloaded right when those guys have routed. Okay, switch to round shot. Continue to engage the enemy. Carcass shot inbound against the 11th. Ooh, good kills. Okay, now they're charging. So. Canister, canister shot, ahoy. The troops on the flanks are not quite as needed. Focus my howitzer fire in the centre. Let's push some of my pirates out on the right flank. General's bodyguard's getting whittled away. <laughs> You men can canister shot the cavalry. Oh no, if you're going to charge this unit, they've got stakes. I hope you, I hope you don't retarget. Re come on, come in. Charge, baby. Stakes for you. Oh yes. Shaken. Wavering. Now don't push forward, run back, let them come to you. It's a light horse unit that we can mow down with... It's a light horse unit we can mow down with buccaneers. Keep the gunners engaging the 13th. I mean, you guys ought to hit point... be firing point blank. Push the 27th up behind the line. They're going to charge. So we've yet to see enemy reinforcements join the field. The enemy garrison is being forced back. This gun here is still firing round shot. You can get back to engaging the enemy artillery at range. Same with you, to be honest. The light horse charged my buccaneers and found it not quite to their liking. My artillery engaged that unit of line. My militia have done a fantastic job holding off the enemy. Make sure you guys better attack the 13th. There we go. There's the enemy cavalry coming in. So keep my... To be honest, let's probably get my militia behind this line. You're not really needed to protect. Uh, or are you? You are, actually. Well, a buccaneer unit is, anyway. Come on, General's bodyguard, don't go for the howitzer. You're just going to get caught by the stakes if you continue on the trajectory that you're currently on. And that will be enough. General's bodyguards change targets. Oh, 
Oh, heavy cavalry, that's not good. And granted, I've got a bucket load of general staff here. Okay, the fourth horse guards are fanning out. They're going to hit my line, but again, we're staked up. You heavy cavalry better engage the third regiment. Because this line has fanned out, that's bad news for them, because it means that more of them are going to hit the stakes. There goes the enemy heavy cavalry here. Charge the buccaneers into the flank of the heavy cavalry. I want to try and keep the priority target behind stakes. You men slam into the flank of the foot artillery. All of my artillery. Except for the one that's routing, obvs. I mean, there's, only, there's not that many buccaneers. Not that many heavy cavalrymen. You're doing okay. The gun teams that still have capability to, to fire, engage the enemy. I want these guys to try and go for my units behind cover. But they do not want to do that. So what I'm going to do is my... Get one unit of these buccaneers to chase down one gun team, another unit to charge down the other. Everyone else, redeploy. My general's bodyguard is routing. Oh, they got shot at, didn't they? You men get behind cover. You men advance. General's bodyguard is... Grenadier guard is probably going to go down to the... go down to the artillery. I mean, is that one horse guard team gonna cause a lot of my army to rout? So let's just keep, just run away past the stakes, because they should hopefully chase after me. If I be creative I can drag them through the the stakes and cause them great death and pain. I oh know, your general's bodyguard's going for my howitzers. Two men are doing well against the Grand Air Guards. Oh no, my general's bodyguard's going to get caught out by the enemy heavy cavalry. Do not number them significantly. Oh, yes, please. Come on, Militia. Run behind cover. My general's fallen. But this general is also going to fall. My reinforcements have come on. Get these buccaneers to chase down the general's bodyguards. You men chased on that regiment. Okay, all of you guys get over here, including the gunners. The Grenadier Guards are going down to the Buccaneers. Yes. Human have done a fine job. Also get over here. This massive general's bodyguard unit just charge in because they now no longer have a commander. Ooh, we might... Ah, oh, the, the, oh, the grenadier... Yeah, oh, they routed. Okay, I was going to say, I thought 
I was like, oh, no, we're doing so well. I don't mind if this general's bodyguard unit are out. They're just doing a bit of a suicide run. Just run everyone back. Okay, you men advance to this piece of cover, run my pirates up. The 41st, the 43rd, and the 42nd can provide covering fire, although they're actually going to push up as well. The enemy are forming square in response. The 9th Regiment are wavering and the combat hasn't even been met yet, but the Buccaneers are going to slam into their flank. Cause them much upset. You men charge in and hit the guns. You men charge in to continue the momentum. Everyone charge in. The enemy might be forming square, but that does not mean that we need to fear. There we go. The third regiment are wavering. I haven't used any of my gunners after any of my guns after this because we don't have to. We just throw men into combat. No, don't shoot. Charge. So now if you're a Dutchman, all around you there's pirates, rogues and blackguards. You're forming square for a cavalry threat that doesn't exist. Fallen comrades or retreating comrades are pushing back through your lines. Scallions are... Scallions? Is that even a word? Scoundrels have broken your square. So now all it is is the stout hearts of Danish heroes that hold the line. However, it will not be enough. Cease fire with the artillery, because that's just going to kill a bunch of my own men. There we go. The last of the Danish have collapsed. And this is why we swamped them. To be honest, we didn't even need... We only brought in the general from the reinforcing army. Everyone else is actually okay. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Württemberg has gone for peace once more, but that's not going to happen. Meanwhile, back in Europe... Take ready. Troops. So you... Your general died, so we replaced you with a gunner. Replaced him with a gunner, I should say. You're one unit off being fully at full strength. Do a bit more building. Tampico is bueno. There we go. Send the sloop across to Tampico. Yeah, the Spanish didn't move. They just hunker down, which is fine. But it just means that it'll be easier to destroy the remnants of their army. So you men can replenish and head east. Mr. Ritchie is in position near the Cherokee, but I do very much want the end to be attacking uh, Paris. But what we're going to do is take one of our armies that are in good condition to attack Copenhagen, and it's going to fall very, very quickly. Um, but looking at the timer, I think it'd probably be good to to fight that in the next episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for the pirate takeover of Copenhagen. Cheers, everyone.